Hey guys, what is going on? My name is McKism, and welcome to my tutorial on how to make a particle accelerator in Minecraft Volts. So for those of you that don't know, the accelerator is used to make antimatter in Volts, and antimatter is a very, very important object when it comes to making some of the very late game items. So one time or another, if you're going to want to make some of the cool stuff later in the game, you're going to need to make one of these. And to do so, you're going to need three critical items. That is a particle accelerator, which is made like so. It uses these circuits, so it's a bit expensive. You're going to need an electromagnet, which isn't so bad, but you're going to need like a massive amount of these. It's, it's really hard to stress how many you're going to need if you want an effective accelerator. So it does kind of build up in price, and uh, I highly suggest you get a glass version of the magnets uh, so you can see when your particle is moving. So you're going to need these three materials, and uh, I'm going to go show you guys the design that most people do to get the most effective uh, particle accelerator. Alright guys, the design that most of these accelerators use is based off the LHC in CERN. So while that is a massive circle, this is Minecraft, so it's going to be a massive square. And the first thing you want to do is lay out a pathway from which the particle will travel. Once you have that, you're going to want to encase this pathway in electromagnets. So this is kind of why we went with a small design, simply so it wouldn't take too long to build it. Um, naturally, if you want to have a really effective accelerator, it's going to have to be much larger than this. It needs to be at least 30 by 30 to generate antimatter, but we don't really need to worry about that right yet because we're just going to use an instant LHC builder, which only can be found in creative mode, uh, to show you what the ideal one would look like. Uh, so once you have it totally encased in, uh, leave one block off and preferably have that block be one of these end blocks right here. And what you're going to do is have a little pathway leading up to that, and that's where you're going to want to place your particle accelerator. Uh, it's also important to note that if you're using a version that is 0.3.7 and below, then you don't need a top to this design. Uh, but if it's anything above, you do. So we're going to base it off uh, if it was anything above 0.3.7, and I am talking about the version of Atomic Science. So we're going to place uh, electromagnetic glass on the top. And it does the same thing as one of these magnets, it's just see-through so you can see your particle moving. It's pretty neat. Okay. Uh, so now that you have this, uh, you're going to need a way to power this here uh, particle accelerator. So when you look inside, you have this here GUI that shows things like the velocity, its status, how much electricity it's used, as well as a few other things such as how much antimatter it has uh, accrued. So what you're going to do is find a way to generate electricity for it, since it does use a lot of electricity. And I have found that one of the best ways to do it is just using advanced solar generators. They're fairly cheap compared to some other methods of electricity. And you don't need to power it with coal or have it uh, take up a resource. It only really needs the sun, which will almost always be out. So just make, I'm making a little platform here for the generators since they do take up a bit of space. Uh, I also highly recommend that you use advanced battery boxes for this only because they can hold a bit more um, electricity. They can use these here downgrade or um, upgrade transformers as well as um, they have a few extra slots where you can put in upgrades for extra storage. So I think that was it. Uh, anyway, uh, you're just going to hook this up with a copper wire and then make a little path out the back for all these panels. Uh, it's important to note that you're going to need to be too wide, since they do spread out a bit at the top, they need a bit of extra space. And then every two blocks you can place. So just do that. It should all work out. No, we got stuck. Nope. It's not what we wanted to happen. Let's go around the other end. And... Oh, can we get it? Nice. Okay. So now it's generating all the goods, as you can see, uh, making loads of electricity. And now it is basically ready to run. So we're just going to need a lever to turn it on. So I'll get that real quick. Toss some of this junk out of our inventory. Okay, and you're going to want to place the lever just right next to the accelerator. And just so you guys can get a quick overview of what this design is going to look like. That's what it is. There you go. And like I was saying, um, you don't actually need to use uh, these advanced solar generators. You could use a coal generator or, um, well, if you really wanted to be cheap, you could use something like an infinite battery. Just spawn one in. Um, but essentially, this is just about as many as you're going to need for it to run indefinitely. So, all right, now let's go. I'm going to turn down my volume since it is very loud. Wow, it's already really quiet. And we're just going to turn it on. Okay, down. 
Oh, okay, I almost forgot. Um, you need a piece of matter for it to throw around. So um, the best, personally, I've found to use is just dirt. Uh, it doesn't matter if you were to use dirts or diamonds. Uh, you have the same chance of generating this antimatter every time. So we're just going to use dirt. We're not going to use infinite dirt, though. <laughs> we're not going to use the infinite dirt. So just throw that in there and flip the switch. So once you do that, you're going to see you have this little purplish particle flying about on the inside. And uh, as you can see, it'll travel along this path that you've made. And when you look at the GUI of the accelerator, it shows the velocity as well as how much electricity is used. And as you can see, we have almost already used two megajoules. So this thing is an absolutely hog for electricity. Uh, but that doesn't matter. As, as I said, and if you use about six of these, you should be fine. Um, but what's important to note is that this design is basically too small. As you can see, it's running around, but it never really gets past this 11-12 stage in velocity. Uh, because when it generates a velocity, it will be going on these straights. And every single time it corners, it loses a very large amount of that velocity. And if it's constantly cornering, it'll be constantly losing the velocity. It won't have enough time to speed up. And that is why you need a minimum size for these flats, or these straights, to be at least 30 blocks for you to even have a chance to generate this antimatter. Uh, so we're going to turn this off, though. And we're going to place down that instant LHC builder I was talking about. So I can show you guys what the optimum design would look like. So just grab one of those. And let's go find a nice area for this to go. Alright, so we can now place one down over here. And just going to right click it. And next thing you know, you have a giant accelerator. Yay! So essentially, uh, it looks this... It's, it's very similar to our design, however it does look a bit different as you can see. Um, theirs is a bit better made and doesn't look as crappy as ours, but they both do the same exact thing. And as you can see, um, it is at the least, if not more than 30 bucks long in each direction. And if we can go find... Actually, I don't believe it comes with the particle accelerator. I do believe we need to place that ourselves. And as you can see, we have the little pipeline in there from which it's going to run. So just place down the accelerator and let's get it hooked up to a battery box. Give it a lever as well. Need to actually give ourselves another battery box. Dun, dun, dun. And we're going to be cheap, so we're just going to use this infinite battery. So just place that down. Going to give it the upgrade as well as this infinite battery. Yay! Okay, so now that we have that, I'm just going to open this up, and as you can see, we don't have any uh, any mass or matter. And so what you're going to need to get this to run uh, effectively. So now that you have this here dirt in there to act as a matter, it'll start flinging it about. Um, but it's very important to note that you need uh, cells to store this antimatter. So it's just going to go accelerating, um, and that's nice and all. But the second it would generate one of our uh, antimatter bits, it wouldn't have anything to store it in, so it would just kind of disappear. So it's very important uh, that you get it some cells to store it in. They're just empty cells, or cells, sorry, and they're made like this. It's just four glass, kind of in a diagonal box. So we're just going to get 64 and throw it in there. So as you can see, it's already about like 40% done or so. We're going to see if we can see it come accelerating by. You should be able to. I mean, it's kind of hard. There it is, right there, moving past. It's going across. As you can see, it's moving much faster than in our other one. Flip the time up. We're about 60% there, already using 5 megajoules of electricity. This thing is just an absolutely hog, or is an absolute hog, I should say. Still going. All right. I bet you we'll reach 10 megajoules by the end of that. As you can see, you guys might have saw a little particle trail as it went by. Let's see how fast it's going now. Oh, coming around soon, I'm sure. There's a pig in there. <laughs> there, There's a pig in there. Alright, well, uh, the particle traveled by. Uh, that's also a good thing to say. As you can see, the pig was unharmed by the particle. It's important to note that you will not be hurt if you stand in the particle's way. I don't recommend you do the same in real life, though. Alright, we're about 90% done. Uh, the not the important thing to note, but it's important to realize that uh, as you go faster it'll hit these corners more often so it'll decelerate more or it'll get those little uh, decelerate bits more often if you know what I mean um, essentially as it goes faster it'll hit the corners more often and since the corners are where it uh, slows down uh, these last like 10 percentage bits take the longest to get to sorry if I explained that a bit sketchily
So we're almost there, and as you can see, we did it. It reached 100%, and we have the antimatter. So we don't keep doing this over and over again. I didn't really get to see how much electricity it's used, but I'm going to guess it was about 10 megajoules. Anyway, uh, this is how you use and uh, make particle accelerators in Minecraft Volts. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Um, comment uh, with anything else you would like me to make tutorial-wise, and uh, subscribe for more videos. I will see you guys later. Uh, I hope you enjoyed.